The Brother's Son. It's on Netflix. Let's find out my thoughts about the series right now. your host Frank Zenka. I am an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer. Uh, we are going to be talking about some movies because I'm also a line producer, but I'm not back to work just yet. Kind of hoping that IATSE doesn't strike and uh, I guess there's some other stuff going on there in Atlanta uh, as far as legislation for uh, the rebate system, etc. That's what we're waiting to get through. So um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we can get to work soon. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about some movies, so, and TV, of course, and give me a thumbs up, and uh, also like and subscribe, uh, if you can, ring that bell, I am trying to grow the channel out, and any help you can give me would be greatly appreciated. So, let's get into talking about Brother's Son, and the reason I want to talk about this, not the main reason, because it is a good, good show, uh, but also, the uh, one of the main actresses in here, I have worked with. So I think I wanted to uh, do this review to give her a little uh, praise because she is great and she's a great person and I enjoyed working with her and it's great to see her in something that's, uh, you know, going to elevate her career. Uh, so I worked with her on a film called Welcome to Redville where she was the, uh, the main star, female side. Uh, here she's more of a supporting, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously, uh, there's two male characters, which is the brothers, and then, you know, Michelle Yeoh, I think, is obviously the main female character, uh, but Heidi, and it's spelled H-I-H-I-H-I-G-H-D-E-E, -E, so it's Heidi. <laughs> uh, Heidi Kwan plays the uh, DA, the assistant DA, and there's a few other women as well uh, that, you know, are all doing supporting uh, for the rest of the cast. So, yeah, so let's jump into it because uh, I, this Michelle Yeoh is a hit and miss for me. So, and I kind of figured out what her thing is. Uh, you know, because on Star Trek, her acting is pretty poor. Uh, but in uh, Crouching Tiger, I thought she was really good. Um, she was good in everything all at once, but I just that fan, that movie was just not too, for me. It was just too weird and off the wall for me, uh, you know. But then then there's film TV shows like this where she comes off really well, and I think it's because she has to have some kind of a chemistry with the other cast members. I think it's a, uh, a familiarity or feeling safe, uh, you know, so that, she, so that she doesn't have to be vulnerable. I don't know what it is, but I think the more comfortable she feels on the set, the better her acting is. And I don't think she felt that way on Star Trek uh, Discovery, because, again, her acting was not very good there. Uh, but her acting is good here, so, you know, your guess is as good as mine. So this was uh, written and created by Brad uh, Falchuk. And this guy's no slouch, man. <laughs> this guy is no slouch. Uh, you know, he did uh, Nip and Tuck, uh, or Nip and Tuck with a slash in the middle. Uh, he did Glee. He did Scream Queens. I mean, this guy, he, uh, American Horror Story. I mean, this guy is like Hollywood royalty kind of thing. So, uh, Amy Wang, uh, I, is, I, I saw her name less so, uh, but she is, doesn't have many credits. She's doing something with the Crazy Rich Agents 2, I think she's writing. And uh, Byron Wu, who has no credits whatsoever, <laughs> except for this. So, uh, apparently, the, whether it was, I think it was more Brian, uh, Byron, uh, you know, jumping in with Brad, uh, who pitched this thing. And with Brad's, uh, you know, his show running, which is was something I haven't been able to find, with his show running credits, was able to walk in the door and, and say, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, we're going to do this fully Asian thing. This is funny because nobody complains about the fact that this was not a diverse cast. <laughs> it was a diverse cast of Asians. <laughs> but there was pretty much no white people in it, no black people, no, you know, 
uh, people of European descent. There was no people of any other, you know, Spanish, nothing. It was purely an Asian thing. Nobody complains about that, though. And I'm not one of them either because I'm of the same thing. You're making a show that's based around Asian culture. There's no reason to have this diverse in any way. This is Crazy Rich Asians, the same thing. It's a, a movie about Asian culture. There shouldn't be anything else. There should be no diversity in this thing other than that. So, uh, I, I thought that, first of all, it has very good fight scenes. And, again, Michelle Yeoh does a good job. And Justin Chien... This is like the first thing he's done, man. This is, he's done a couple of shorts that he's produced, and that's it. He's done nothing. And he was able to deliver not only the fight scene performances, because they really didn't do any cutting, but he was able to emote very, very well. I mean, at, at some points, he had to remain silent. And you can tell the pain in his face. And I really appreciate that. So I think he delivered a pretty good performance. Sang Sung Lee, again, you know, he's done some TV stuff, probably more than some of the others. Uh, and he comes off as kind of the soft brother. He was He's tactical but doesn't know it. And he's willing to do stuff for his brother and for his family, which is admirable. But at the same time, he makes some very bad mistakes uh, that puts everybody in, in drastic danger. Uh, maybe mostly because he really doesn't appreciate the danger that is surrounding him. And he kind of goes laissez-faire on a lot of it. Which is great because we get to see these layers in these characters because we start out with Charles's character, uh, which is Justin's character. Justin plays uh, Charles. And he is the next head up of the Jade Dragons or whatever in China. So we start out in China. And he is baking. And these assassins come to kill him, or so we think. And he fights them all off. And, but he's more worried that he burned whatever was in the, in the oven. So right off the bat, we have a multi-layered character who is a killer slash baker <laughs> who cares quite a bit about his baking uh but then we find out that the father comes in he is the head and of course he doesn't take any shit from anybody and you know what he says is the rule and he uh he's like why did they only send three assassins when they know you which means they know that he can take out more than three of them easily and we find out that you know he was target for assassination, they, he gets sniped through the window. And that's all the first five minutes. I'm not really giving away any, any spoilers here. So, that goes in with a, a, a ring of events that brings Charles to Los Angeles to see his estranged mother and brother who he has not seen since he was a child. And his brother, uh, his, his brother doesn't even know anything about the family life. And, uh, you know, he's just going to school and stuff like that. He meets a girl named Grace. And so we have this other thing, even though we got to know something's wrong with Grace. You know, so uh, I won't go into it. But uh, but it's very interesting. And I loved all the characters. And then Charles grew up with Heidi's character, Alexis. And so we have uh, a relationship going on between cops and gangsters. So we get this cops-gangsters uh, you know, dichotomy going on. And we have a lot of choices being made, and Charles's character really wants to get out, but he also knows that he is beholden to his father. And whatever his father says goes, regardless of whatever he wants, but you have this juxtaposition with Sam's character, Bruce, who is the brother, uh, who wants to make choices of his own. His whole thing is that, look, we're in America, and he was grown up as an American, we make choices, where Charles's character was grown up in China, 
where the family is the only choice. So it's again, you couldn't do this with an American cast. This would it has to be an Asian cast to tell the story. Uh, so that's why this whole diversity thing, it, you know, doesn't work for me, because if you tried to instill, you know, people of color into here or whatever, it would destroy the story. And the story is all, you know. So when you start injecting stuff like that into something like this, you would destroy it. So uh, I, I was I was fairly entertained by this. They have enough twists and turns going on throughout these eight episodes to keep you wanting more and to find out what's going on. They have enough heart that comes from odd places. And, uh, you know, mostly you would think that the heart came from Bruce's character, but it doesn't. It actually comes from Justin's character, uh, who f you feel for him that he's trapped in this life and he doesn't know how to get out. And even at the even by the end, he he just doesn't he doesn't make it out of what he wants. And of course, it it kind of sets up for a next season, but it does close it at the same time. The season does close off, but it does leave room to go into another season in case they were successful. You know, we get the you know him getting going to the uh, to see his brother for the first time at. Um, the school and he sees churros for the first time and he gets hooked on churros and has to figure out how to make it. And that was a running thing through the whole thing. I, that's great. You know, uh, we also have June who is Alice Hawkins who's been in a couple of things, mostly television, uh, and June Lee who plays TK. Uh, you know, so we get to who's he's Korean as opposed to everybody else being Chinese. And uh, so we get a different kind of storyline with him where he's the best friend uh, but gets himself into trouble more times than not. Uh, and then Alice's character, June, uh, which I got to know how tall she is because the fight scene at the end where she's attacking other girls, she seemed kind of tiny. Uh, but uh, she knows how to handle herself. She knows how to move. Uh, she moves very gracefully, and uh, especially when she starts taking knives out. <laughs> Uh, so again, I thought all the cast was great. I thought that the characters were very well thought out. Uh, and each one of them uh, was very different. Each one of you, like, if one of them said a line, you could tell where that line was coming from because each one of the characters was, was, was had a, such a different voice. So hats off to the writers uh, about making this uh, what it was. Uh, I don't think the budget was extremely high on this, uh, and good for them trying to keep it, uh, you know, a little bit contained. Uh, they didn't go off the rails. I don't know if they actually shot in China. I would tend to doubt it. Uh, in fact, I was looking when they were doing driving and stuff like that because Michelle Yeoh's character goes to China and she's in a cab driving, and I'm wondering if they just shot that in a Chinatown uh, in L.A. or something to that effect because it does take place in Los Angeles. So I would assume that they didn't leave Los Angeles, so they probably just went to Chinatown or Koreatown or whatever else and just drove. Because uh, it's all about that neon light thing going on. Uh, and some of it could have been effects, too, for all I know. But anyway, so uh, interesting stuff. And again, Heidi did a great job. Um, she's, uh, again, a very talented girl, and I'm glad that you know she's uh, able to get some stuff. If you haven't seen um, the other movie that we did together... Uh, again, it, that was a very low-budget film uh, in the $1 million range. And uh, that was called Welcome to Redville. So, uh, yeah, uh, good stuff. Well, if you haven't seen um, Brother Son yet, I suggest checking it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And you'll also be supporting, uh, you know, some actors that uh, are walking up the ladder. And uh, so the more views I think this thing gets, the better. So definitely check it out. I can recommend it. And at the same time, uh, give your support. All right? So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, well, the uh, next week or so, I'm going to be putting up Late Pledge for Lords of L.A. It's my vampire mob set in 1950s Hollywood. Uh, so Marilyn Monroe is in it, etc. Uh, but I'll be announcing that. It'll go on Indiegogo uh, for Late Pledge. 
And then Mark Spears and I are working diligently on getting uh, Riftstorm, the classic monsters, ready to go. He's a cover artist for things like Marvel and uh, DC and, you know, Red Sonja. And I think he just did a Power Rangers one and all this other stuff. And uh, so we're doing playtesting for that. And I'm going to be probably launching that uh, card game uh, probably within the next couple of months. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Remember to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me the middle finger. Whatever. Check out some other videos. And remember to subscribe. All right. Bye, guys.